Most businesses fail, and if they're not failing, they're just about getting by. They're just not profitable enough. But then again, there are some unicorns that come along that are super profitable. Well, in this video, I'm gonna go through six controversial lessons that I've learned from running my own companies and from seriously wealthy people that I've met along the way. Let's discuss. Lesson number one is entrepreneurship plus management equals success. I call this little formula E plus M equals S. Great profitable entrepreneurs and business owners get this because they understand they need leadership and management. They need someone growing the business, the entrepreneur, and they need management operating the business. Especially in my experience of running companies, when I've got great faith in my management, it allows me to go out there and do the impossible and I can leave my management team and trust my management team do the possible. I don't want to delegate to the point that I abdicate, but I do want to understand what's going on in my organization and trust my management team to meet the vision that I've got for the business. It's like running a secondary school. You need that head teacher that's deciding on the direction of the school, the vision of the school that the parents buy into, the students buy into, and the teachers that are the management, they buy into this vision. But the teachers are so important to do the day-to-day -day stuff. So the head teacher has that brain power to think bigger and make the impossible happen so the teachers make the possible happen. See, you are the business owner. You've got to go and do the impossible. Raise the millions of pounds, get the big contracts over the line, buy the big companies and acquisition deals, but you need to trust the possible, the management to do the day-to-day. -day. Great entrepreneurs work on very important, non-urgent stuff. That's leadership, and they trust their management team to do the day-to-day -day stuff. My experience shows most business owners are doing both not very well, and that's why they're not as profitable as they need to be. Lesson number two is don't keep the key performance indicators of the business a big secret. Share, overshare, be vulnerable. It brings people closer to you. And I really have very simple, stupid, easy to understand KPIs in my business. And I've got two sets really. I've got the cultural ones, the lovey-dovey vision ones, and then I've got the management numbers ones. And let's look at the visionary ones. I wanna keep people informed about what's going on in the business. If we're losing money, I wanna tell them. If we're making money and we're being super successful, I wanna tell them. And most business owners keep this like a guarded secret. Most people have got gut instinct and can see what's going on. My experience in running my companies, if you're very open, book about how well you're doing or how you're losing money or what the challenges are, keeping them informed brings them much closer to the business and they will help you fight the fight to win the day. So once you keep people informed, guess what? You keep them inspired. You're keeping them inspired because you're informing them. Tell them where you want to get to in the future so they can decide whether they want to be on the train with you. And lastly, keep people in the gang. Don't create multiple cliques. You want to keep people in one big community that are behind you. So keep people in the gang, keep people inspired, and keep people informed. That's the cultural rules, the leadership rules. Now on to the management. You've got to create KPI number one, which is a monthly profit and loss. Most business owners just rely on their accountant telling them how profitable they are. Stupid, stupid, stupid on so many levels. You should be telling your accountant how profitable you are and your accountant tell you how to manage the tax position. How do you do this? You produce a monthly profit and loss and you share it with all your team. Then they can get excited or they can not get excited because you're making a loss, but because you've got monthly management information, you can then navigate the storms much easier. Secondly, you want to understand your labor to turnover ratio. Now, most cost in a business walks on two legs, so you want to be tracking that. Now, in retail, you might want to spend 13% of your revenue on labor. In childcare, it's 50%. Software, it's much higher. You need to find out what your industry standard is and make sure you stick to it. Because if you go overspending or underspending, you'll see bad customer service on underspending. If you overspend, you'll end up going bust and not making the money that you should make. And the third one is, is your average transactional value. My experience shows most business owners that have been on my podcast that I've interviewed just track revenue growth. Well, the profitable ones are tracking average customer value or transactional value increasing because they understand that by increasing the spend from an already existing customer by 20% means a big chunk of that 20% goes to the bottom line because it costs a lot more to go and get new customers than get more from your existing customers. And that is why tracking average customer value or average order value or average transactional value, whatever way you like to call it, means 
means that you're going to be more profitable. So it's those two sets of KPIs, those cultural visionary KPIs and those management and numbers KPIs that help build effective, profitable teams. Lesson number three is becoming a marketeer over an operator of your business. In my experience, I've done so many podcasts of business owners and entrepreneurs that spend most of their time operating their business. And if they have time, they fit in some marketing. Well, you need to switch that so you're spending 80% of your time marketing your product and understanding that cash flowing keeps the business going. You know, you just got to be on sales before operations because if you're bringing in enough sales, you can employ people to do the operations. There's a reason we know who Richard Branson is. He ain't flying those planes or driving those trains, he's putting in the best possible management and operators to run the business and he's out there on YouTube, podcasts, whatever he can to promote the Virgin brand. Walt Disney did the same, Steve Jobs would do these amazing keynote presentations and he would do them. Do you not think Steve Jobs could employ the best keynote presenters in the world? But he saw that as so important to make sure that he drove those sales to make Apple super profitable. It's really important that you become a mastermind marketer. You need to read every book on marketing and learn all the tricks of marketing so that everyone knows about your business. Now those big titans of entrepreneurship that I spoke about a few minutes ago became key persons of influence. They used their influence to drive sales into their business. There's many one of the reasons why I do YouTube and podcasts and I've wrote four books myself because I know that I can use my personal brand to drive sales for all my business whether I'm selling ice cream, days out, seminar tickets or even getting people to watch my content. It's really important that you work out how to be the best possible marketeer that you can. I've made loads of videos on marketing on the video on the channel and I even wrote a book about it. Go and check it out. Right, let's get into lesson number four. You're always recruiting. You're a talent spotter. You're like Britain's Got Talent or The X Factor, always looking for that next talented person to come and join your team to be more profitable. Even if you haven't got that position available, I've recruited so many people. I've just come across them. Maybe I've spoken at an event or I've met them at a networking do or just in the trade in general. I thought if I could just have that person, they could come and help me in my organization to be more profitable because they're effective people. When I meet great entrepreneurs and business owners, they're always recruiting and they're always looking for talent because they know bringing great people in just makes a great business. Lesson number five is you're an investorpreneur. What is an investorpreneur? Well, it's a hybrid of an investor and an entrepreneur rolled into one. Smart business owners that are super profitable sell their business because it's much easier to make money from a sale, a liquidity day, than it is from running a trading business. You know, your cash just gets burned into new investments or growing the business. You might be profitable on paper, but you can't really extract any cash from the business. And so the mindset should be, we're building a business to sell even if we have no intention of selling it. Only very very few amount of businesses actually get sold and when they do the entrepreneur goes again and they're just equipped so much better because they think like an investorpreneur. What are most business owners doing? They're building profitable jobs and maybe a profitable business at best. The trick is you want to make your business be and look like an investment. If it doesn't look like an investment you're probably not very profitable. You know, the amount of millionaires and entrepreneurs that I've met that are super successful get lesson number six. And that is, they always innovate. They stay teachable. They never get so big headed that they know everything. They're always on the hunt for more knowledge. They never stop reading. They keep listening to podcasts. They keep going to seminars. They're growing their brain with knowledge. Even when they're 70 or 80 years old, they want to know what the new social media fandango thing is so they can implement that stuff into their entrepreneurial journey. And the process really is understanding this. If you don't innovate, you're going to evaporate. You can't just carry on doing newspaper ads with social media and pay-per-click and all of that new stuff that's here. The great entrepreneurs that are out there innovating early are always the ones that get to the next level because the market constantly innovates and if you don't innovate with it, you will evaporate. Stay curious. That's what all the best millionaires do and the best billionaires do. They never stop learning. They stay teachable. You don't know everything. And if you're the smartest person in the room, you're usually in the wrong room. And you become the average of the five people that you spend most of your time with. And great entrepreneurs and profitable business owners make sure they surround themselves with great people that are constantly innovating. 
really you should do the same. If you love this video, make sure you like and subscribe and do all that good stuff. It really does help more than you know to like and subscribe. I really would love you to do that. And if you've got some other ones that you think we've missed out, hit it in the comments below. And if you love this video, why not join me at one of my seminars? They're only a few hundred quid each, or you can try my Entrepreneurs University, which is an online training platform that goes into way more detail than I do here on YouTube. And you can try that for free. There's a link in the video description. See you in the next video. Bye-bye.